at the moment, when we add update or delete employees, we don't give the users of this app any warning regarding the success of the operation. And that's terrible user experience. And the job of a good web developer is to provide a good user experience. We need to look after our users. So let's start with the delete operation. It's good practice to ask for confirmation before deleting data in case a user presses the delete button by mistake. So we're going to create a specific component for that, the delete confirmation model. And again, you could add a generic model for different types of confirmation, but since this is the only confirmation model I'll have, I'll just call it delete confirmation model. And here I'm pasting some HTML with CSS and I have to create a parameter for the child content, which will be passed from the components that use this component. Then in the employee detail page, I'm going to create a Boolean that will dictate if that model is shown or not. And I'm creating a method that sets the show delete model to true. And now when we click on the delete button, the on click method will be the show delete confirmation. And if that Boolean is set to true, we're going to show the model. And we will pass a question and a couple of buttons as the child content. So we have a button that will confirm that we want to delete and we'll call the delete employee and a cancel button that will close the model, calling a method that we need to create, the cancel delete method. And that simply sets the show delete model to false. And that's how easy this is. Let's test this model and see if it works. And we can see the model and we delete the users accordingly. Can you believe how easy this is? We're going to create another component called warning. And this is to show the user if an operation was successful or not. And for this one, I'll have just one component with different messages and styling depending on the type of warning. And for this, I won't have a render fragment parameter, but instead I'll pass multiple parameters for each property that I want to manipulate. So I'll have a callback event to dismiss the model. And I'll have background styling and a message that will be dictated by the warning type. That will be an enum that I'm declaring in this component. And this time I'm calling the on parameters set async method, which is not absolutely necessary since this method is used to react to parameter changes, which is not the case here since we only show the model one time per operation. So you could still use on initialize async. But here I'm using a ternary operation to set the background color based on the warning type. So if the type is success, the color will be green. If not, it will be red. Then I'm going to display this card conditionally. So we, we have a Boolean called show warning. And if the Boolean is true, obviously we show the warning. And if not, we show the card. We also have a property for the message and for the warning type. And they will all be based on the response that's coming from the server. So now we will finally use the response types that we configured in the employee service. We're going to set the warning type based on the response code. If the code is 200, the warning type will be success. And if not, it will be error. And the message will simply be the response message. And we also need to set the show warning boolean to true, regardless of the result. And of course, after deleting the employee, we need to hide the delete model. And going back to the top of the file, if show warning is true, we are showing the warning, 
passing the on click callback, which we still need to create, the warning type, and the message. So let's create the dismiss warning method, which will close the model and navigate to the employees table. So let's see if that works. I'm trying to delete an employee and I get a success message. And if I click on the X button, I'm calling the dismiss warning method and we navigate to the table. And to simulate an error message, I navigate into another employee and delete the database. If we then try to delete that employee, we get an error message as we configured in the employee service. And we're going to apply the same logic to the edit employee method. So I'll simply copy and paste the code from delete employee to edit employee, except that we don't need to set the show delete model to false. And let's see if it works. We're going to test the error message. So I'm trying to edit an employee and delete in the database. And let's see if the error message will show up. And that's it. The edit employee functionality also shows warnings and you can try to do the same for the success message in the edit employee. Now let's do the same for when we add a new employee. We need to add the same fields to the add employee component. And add the same code to the add new employee method and the if statement to the markup. We're going to show the warning if there is a warning, otherwise we show the card. So let's test that. And it works fine. We are also going to create a warning for when we can't retrieve the data from the server into the employees table. So everything will be very similar except that we only have one warning type. We only want to show that warning if there is an error from the server. So we included an if statement for that and we need to add a couple of fields as well in a dismiss warning method. And if there is an error and the user dismisses the warning, they will be logged out. Then we're going to use the response to determine if the warning will be shown or not. If the status code is 500, which is a server error, we display the warning. If not, we assign the employees in the response to the employee field in this component. So let's delete the database and try to retrieve the data. We can see an error message as expected and we are logged out. And last but not least, let's create our filter. We want to quickly be able to find employees in our table by typing characters into a field. So let's write some HTML for that field. And we are adding an on input handler that we'll call a filter employees method. And when we use that click event, we are passing an object of the type change event arguments. And we can use the value property of that object to capture the string that was input. So what I want to do with this code in line 89 is each time I input a new character, I'm going to change the list into a new list based on the name of the employee. 
and we are using a method called index of which finds the index of a string that can be matched to a substring and that index is zero based so for example if i try to find pablo using the letter p the index of that letter is zero and that means that every time that the index of is higher than zero that name is a match if the name doesn't contain that sub character the index of method returns minus one so the new list will have all employees where calling that method on the name returns zero or above so let's see if that works i type the character o and i can see that the list was filtered down but there's something not quite right if i clear the input the list is still filtered which means that it doesn't really work so i have to modify this code so that i always have a backup copy of the original list so i added a new field for that and when the component is initialized i have to populate both lists with with the list coming from the database then every time the user inputs a new character i need to repopulate my list with the backup list just before it applies the new filter and i also need to make sure that this filter isn't case sensitive so if i type the letter p i'll find all the occurrences regardless of if it's uppercase or lowercase and that should be enough let's see if it works if i type w i can see all names that contain that letter but if i type double a l it finds only the names that contain that substring so that's it for now please subscribe if you like this tutorial don't forget to check our website with a complete dotnet developer roadmap where we have tons of projects and we review the code that you submit to us and if you have suggestions on how i could expand on this project feel free to add a comment below and i'll continue adding more functionalities to this app thanks for watching i'll see you in the next tutorial